Welcome to Potitix. I'm Will Nothing, the CEO of The Dispensary. It's our first episode of Potitix, so welcome and thank you for joining. I always, as mentioned, even in our regular podcast, like, follow, subscribe. We love having you guys here, and as we get into the more political scene, we would love to venture down a journey with you. Starting out, I want to ask a trivia question that we'll answer towards the end of the podcast. But who's primary cannabis users in the U.S.? Of course, it's a statistic, and we can never go based off statistics, and I have personal feelings to it. But it's a fun little trivia question that I hope to give you a weird answer at the end of this podcast. Almost called it a podcast, right? Um, I want to open up something that's very concerning. The state of California is filed, well, the state of California has a filed lawsuit from the Delta 9 industry, which is commonly known as marijuana. And their lawsuit is against the Delta 8 type industry and hemp derived products in the state of California. Currently, there are 10 companies in the state of California that would be represented as the defendant, as the plaintiff, is the Delta 9 industry as a whole for the state because I believe it's a revenue thing. But based off what is in the statement and filing, they are saying that the companies in the hemp industry are utilizing chemically synthesized illegal designer drugs. Now that's the first time I've ever heard Delta 8 or any hemp derived products called the designer drugs. But that's something cool and trendy to watch because as the Farm Bill states, it's a federally legal product. And I will venture down into what's going on with the farm bill. But the Delta 9 industry is very concerned about revenue, even though they say they're worried about safety of consumers, when in reality, all the certificates of analysis from these 10 companies for what they have for proof shows that the products are just as safe as the Delta 9 products. Are they designer drugs? I don't think so. But then moving on, going to the other side of the nation, let's jump into Kentucky. They gave an initial okay for an emergency rule for hemp-derived products. What's really cool about that is they're actually following protocols for what the Delta 9 industry has and what many even people in the industry, even ourselves at the dispensary, think is a very great concept. Regulation. We've talked about it in all of our podcasts. We talk about it all the time with our customers. We think regulation is necessary to protect our customers, to protect us, to protect the industry, and continue to grow through America. So the th big three things that Kentucky pushed forward was requirements for processing and manufacturing, which GMP certification, greater manufacturing practices is what that stands for. And even if we had something of greater manufacturing practices and then we follow food and safety, meaning we have food grade facilities that are certified by the state regulation authority, and implementing U.S. and Food and Drug Administration standards to product testing requirements. Now, I don't know how I feel about that, and even as a company, I'll, I'll dig into the FDA a little bit later, but food safety is one thing, FDA is another. So, and then the last is a registry for retailers. That absolutely makes sense when you get into regulation. Why does that make sense? Because that way, everyone in the state knows what industry is selling what. And depending upon your type of business and what the hemp allowance or what the farm bill allowance will justify in the upcoming year, it would make it much easier for the state to contact these retailers to move forward with the regulation process and keep things safe for the consumers. Right? We all enjoy the products, but having safety for the consumers is the number one primary thing that we want to look at. It's, as a company, that's our number one focus. And even for the movement we want to get into with the U.S. Hemp Roundtable is for the safety of consumers. So it's very imperative when states like Kentucky, um, recently we just mentioned Arkansas, uh, we've, we've seen a lot of good movement by states in, to get regulation out there, which will take us to what does the U.S. Farm Bill have noted or annotated by the U.S. Hemp Roundtable. And the reason I bring that up is because the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, as mentioned in our podcast, is the leading voice for the hemp industry across the nation. So there's some things in here that are really good and there's some things in here that are very frustrating. So the, when it came out in 2018, hemp was legalized across the nation, right? And many people sit back and say, well, it wasn't intended for this or it wasn't intended for that. But I think it was based on a lack of knowledge and the fact that so many people didn't have an understanding of what cannabis and hemp how similar they were, 
and what the potential of hemp really is. Uh, the last time hemp was legal uh, and when it was basically banned is over 50 years ago. Science has changed quite a bit and processes have changed quite a bit. So then we get into an older government system to try and regulate something. Now we all remember when alcohol had a big run on prohibition. It was a big thing and it took a long time for alcohol to become legal. So we go across and see what the Hemp Roundtable and 30 other cannabis organizations are saying that they would like to see for priorities to prevent this prohibition from happening. The first big thing that the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, um, and this was stated from Jonathan Miller, who is the general counsel for the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, in an interview with MJ Biz Magazine. His first statement was bolstering the U.S. Department of Agriculture hemp program through funding and dedicated staff. Absolutely agree. Agriculture should be responsible for hemp because hemp is an agriculture product. It is grown in the fields. It is also grown indoors, just like our corn, soybeans, wheat, tomatoes. We can grow it in a garden. We can grow it anywhere because it is a plant. So having the Department of Agriculture, I agree. Requiring the Food and Drug Administration to regulate hemp extracts such as CBD. I personally strongly disagree with this. Because if I jump into the FDA, as I mentioned earlier, I sort of ask questions, what has the FDA done properly? Well, I know for a fact that the FDA has recalled seven drugs on their list that has killed thousands of people, number one. Number two, the FDA has approved synthetic meat. How is that okay? They're, they want us as Americans to eat synthetic meat? I struggle with that. But then we even get into other things that they've done. The FDA approved water with bacteria pathogens, which is known to be harmful to humans. Okay, this list with the FDA goes on and on and on. So then I would go back and say, okay, well, if we want the FDA to regulate cannabis, why doesn't the FDA regulate alcohol? If alcohol is a consumable product and it's something that goes into our body, well, they created a separate agency to regulate alcohol. And if alcohol had a prohibition period and is now back and very predominant in many states, uh, us being based out of Wisconsin, I think we've claimed 17 of the top 20 drunkest cities in America. So like, go Wisconsin, it's nice and cold, but at the same time, why are we looking for the FDA to regulate something that people say is intoxicating and more dangerous than alcohol, but yet we want the FDA to regulate that? We're talking about products that are smoked, ingested, uh, sublingual, topical. Alcohol has been used in many illicit ways as well. Uh, there was a big stretch where children were abusing alcohol and util utilizing women hygiene products and inserting into their body in certain parts and they were getting and dying and getting very ill from alcohol poisoning. Alcohol poisoning is a very real thing. We have drunk driving across America. We have many issues with alcohol that still have not been resolved, but yet we want to shoot at hemp. And even the Delta 9 industry has not focused on the comparison to how the government has regulated alcohol versus to how they want to regulate hemp. It's very concerning to me in the fact that we are so old school in a tradition where we're still calling it the devil's lettuce. It's just mind blowing to me. So I disagree with the U.S. Hemp Roundtable when they say that the FDA should regulate. Then they want to designate hemp as a specialty crop rather than a commodity. I'm sort of on the fence with that. And as a company, how do we feel about it being a specialty crop? Because of the regulation and the illegal potential uses where people could be growing straight marijuana rather than hemp, I feel that the Department of Agriculture or whatever governing authority would be instituted to be effective with the testing. Currently, the USDA is conducting all the tests. And they're making sure that it's actually hemp and not marijuana. So that way there are no laws to be broken. So to designate it as a specialty crop or not to be known as a designer drug, I'm on the fence with it. <clears throat> but then the U.S. Hemp Roundtable wants to repeal a ban that keeps felons from participating in hemp production. Personal belief on that one, that's a tough one. I understand that felons are not allowed to participate in the hemp and or marijuana industry. And that is laws to prevent people from being tempted. I guess I would like to use the word temptation. Uh, I don't have any statistics on that to really get into it, but it's something that the U.S. Hemp Roundtable would like to see changed. 
Promoting hemp research at historically black colleges, universities, tribal colleges, and Hispanic serving institutions. I strongly agree with that, um, but education across the board should be equal when it comes to a thriving industry. Yeah, as of last year, the cannabis industry is the number one leading industry in America. I believe they stated in, again, statistics, 107,000 jobs were created from cannabis alone on the legal side last year. They say it is the most booming industry going into 2023. Removing Drug Enforcement Administration Registration for Hemp Testing Labs. I absolutely would disagree. Why would we want to remove the DEA, which they are the Drug Enforcement Administration, when we're talking about letting the Food Drug Administration? It seems very contradicting because hemp can have intoxicating effects, even something as simple as full spectrum. It doesn't have to be marijuana, but if you smoke enough CBD, it could still have intoxicating effects or even cause you to be drowsy because you're getting a full spectrum plant. So to remove the DEA from that, I don't know if that's the fear of administration and that administration having law enforcement jurisdiction, whereas the FDA does not. I'm not certain why they would have that, and I would love to have that conversation with this person from the U.S. Hemp Roundtable. But then the next one they move on to, easing burdensome regulations. Well, I think that would happen if you remove the DEA from it, but I think the DEA tries very diligently to be proficient in enforcing drug administration regulations. So I disagree with that one because I think if we burden, ease the burdensome regulations, I feel we would open the door to many opportunists. And being an opportunist, might take advantage of certain systems and it could harm the industry where it's very unstable right now. Uh, then they want to move on to permitting hemp grain for animal feed. I think that's great. I think animals, it, with the right amount of research behind it and what we've already proven in humans that can be done with CBD and the different effects of hemp in general, why would we not want to try and do something more beneficial for our animals? Hemp naturally grew for a very, very long time throughout the Midwest. Many animals have grazed on hemp, horses, cattle, sheep, goats, probably even dogs. Um, and a fun story, at one of our outdoor harvests, we had a goat um, that ate a substantial amount of hemp as we were harvesting. That goat got pretty sleepy after about an hour because it did not stop eating. And that goat went and laid in the bucket of a bobcat and it just laid there and it was sort of chill and it was like, bah. So yeah, fun story about animals grazing for animal feed. Um, but then lastly, they want to address THC levels for hemp. I think that's a necessary. Depending on what type of product that we're selling, hemp-derived, we should be very aware of the THC levels. Now, what the THC levels look like, are they going to talk total THC? Are they going to talk THCA? What forms of THC do they want to actually monitor? As I mentioned earlier, the science has evolved over the past 50 years. There are many different types of THC. Some are synthetic that we, as the dispensary, do not stand by. But there are naturally processed THCs that come from hemp plants, which can be used for many, many medical benefits to many people. So I would like to say, Jonathan Miller, I would love to set up a time to chat with you sometime, because I think this with MJ Magazine, MJ Biz Magazine, I apologize, I believe it was a good interview, and I know you had to shorten it up, but I would like to hear some of your standpoints on why you feel the U.S. Hemp Roundtable should go this way. Uh, by the way, who regulates alcohol? The Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax, and Trade Bureau, the TTB. Um, so not to be confused, that is a separate agency, and the FDA does not regulate the alcohol that is served to thousands of people daily or have anything to do with the amount of beer that is in every grocery store across America. Weird, where was the FDA on that one? <clears throat> but there's many other things coming up with the challenges behind the Farm Bill and what's going to happen with the Farm Bill. As a company, and as being part of the hemp industry and knowing how it impacts people, I think the biggest thing we're looking at is the uncertainty. Many people like to utilize the products that are offered outside of just marijuana because they like the effects it has for them from sleep to pain to fibromyalgia to seizures. We've seen a very big stretch of people over the past three and a half years make a huge difference in their lives by utilizing other forms of THC and other cannabinoids. So why is that a fear? What if we get back to a prohibition? Then does that create a black market? 
What happens to the people that are looking for it? Are they forced to utilize marijuana of just Delta 9? Why would we want to do that to our culture? Why would we want to do that to our society? And why would we want to do that to a thriving business across America? There's many opportunities here, and with the proper regulation, if we get our shit together, I think we can actually turn this into a really cool business for a future that will always stand in America, and it's something we can have a front running on if we do it the right way. We'd like to say we'll catch up to Israel, but Israel has been doing medical research since 1980 with cannabis in humans, and they've never taken it off their dockets. So props to Israel on that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Are we going to get everything we want? Absolutely not. Do I think that CANRA, the Cannabis Regulation Authority, the Delta 9 Cannabis Regulation Authority, I think they're doing the right steps in trying to propose regulation. I think they're going backwards, though, because they're not even working with the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, which is the voice of the hemp industry. Again, it's almost like we have two parties not making any decisions because they will not see the other person's view. Um, I could get political. This is politics and say maybe that's the problem in our political system is we have only two parties that are constantly fighting for their own personal agendas. CANRA, being Delta 9, wants to protect what they have their investment into. U.S. Hemp Roundtable doesn't have as much at stake, perhaps, but I would think the thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the industry and the tens and hundreds of thousands of people that utilize the products would say different. How likely is the new farm bill to pass this year? Well. We know that it has not. And why do we know that? Because something really cool that just happened, Thursday the 16th, the, our president, Joe Biden, signed into extension the emergency funding bill, which includes the extension of the U.S. Farm Bill of 2018 until September of 2024. What does that mean? It means that's breaking news. No one knows about it yet. It's a uh, I don't think it's been too publicly announced. Don't ask me why. I would thought that would have come across many different articles very quickly because that changes even the operation in state laws right now for federal commerce across the nation. Um, oh, I do see here in my little notes that I have that Reuters and other news agencies have reported this. Um, and I happen to find this, I think I was on a blog site that came off of Reddit first, and then I found a reference to MJ Biz Magazine, I do believe. So props to you, MJ Biz Magazine. But now what does this mean? So it's passed for another year. That means Congress now has, uh, as stated in this blog, they state that Congress will have more time to craft a new farm bill that advocates and will address the national market of hemp derived cannabinoids, including the controversial Delta 8 THC. Well, again, we talk about what's that broad spec. And that broad spec, not even just relating to CBD, but the broad spectrum of THC. They're still using just Delta-8 THC, which is a very isolated cannabinoid. They should be talking about all the forms of THC that can be derived from hemp plants, naturally and synthetically. And then what is going to be the definition of synthetic? You as a consumer, if you're watching this, or you as a bud tender watching this, or anywhere in the hemp industry watching this, is a synthetic product something that's completely illegal and shouldn't be utilized? Wait, didn't I say the FDA approved synthetic meat? So that's okay? How is all the alcohol? Oh, I won't go down that path because that's a different regulation authority. But moving on, good news is that the 2024 Farm Bill is not out yet. We will wait until 2024 to see what the 2023 Farm Bill actually looks like. So the Farm Bill is a five-year bill and that is supposed to constitute many different things, but for hemp is what this whole industry has been based off of. And as we venture further into politics and we talk more and more about regulation, we'll talk more and more about where the farm bill's at and who's actually going to take accountability for it. As of now, Congress is not accepting responsibility for it. Mitch McConnell, the minority leader, um, surprisingly is trying to head this up and has not made a lot of progress. Uh, Chuck Schumer, I think, will also play a big part in how the Farm Bill comes out. So if you're looking for someone to send emails to in regards to hemp, those are the two people, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer. You've got the majority and the minority leader at the U.S. Senate. Very important people. So I would like to say thank you for joining us for Politics, and I would like to give you the answer now. The most commonly used, according to statistics, as of a week ago, this article is where it came from, said the most predominant and prevalent, 
prevalent people utilizing marijuana on a regular basis are 18 to 25, and then those over 55 years of age are crushing the marijuana industry. So I'm props to the AARP crew moving forward. Um, we love the fact that you guys are you're just right on it. And now that it's more readily available, we will always promote, try and find a dispensary in whatever state you're in, make sure they've got certificates of analysis, and make sure you're utilizing a clean product that's vetted by a company before you're in intaking anything. With the problems out there in the world right now, especially in the drug market, fentanyl has been shown and proven to be in everything from food, um, I don't see the FDA on that one either, but uh, Fentanyl can be found in many different things and it's harming thousands of people in America on a daily basis. So please be careful. But that fun stat, 18 to 25 and 55 years and above. With that said, thank you for joining me for Podatex. We look forward to seeing you on the Dispensary Live. Remember to like, share, follow. And Brandon and Nikki, check in for Baked with Nikki. She makes some really fun food, also not approved by the FDA. And Brandon's has bacon and hash. We look forward to seeing you in the future.